I'm a big Shane Black fan uh, since I was a kid, and um, you know Shane's in, the, which I'd totally forgotten by the way, you know, because he he dies in the beginning. I I I didn't make the connection that that was Shane that's in the Predator, but uh, he he. Um, Asked me if I would play a part, you know. We tried to work together a, a couple of times, and it didn't work out. And uh, and with this one, he said, "Hey, I'm doing Predator. It's, we got this ensemble cast of guys." And he explained it to me, and I just said, Shh, "Tell me, you know, where to be." Creating these characters was uh, um, uh, really kind of the seat of our pants, you know. Uh, wasn't a hell of a lot written down on the page, um, you know, because there's, I forget how many, but there's a lot of us, there's six of us, say. And, you know, if you were to write down what everybody says, we'd have a script that's 250 pages long. And Shane, you know, he's been writing and doing this long, uh, long enough. Shane's been writing and doing this long enough that he... Uh, opted to leave out, you know, a, a lot of the dialogue, and then we would sort of come up with it on the day, or Shane would, which happened more often, Shane would kind of tell you what he wanted everybody to say. And I said, I thought that was kind of clever. Here's your, your character. He goes, I got this uh, other guy, Keegan-Michael Key, and I kind of wanted to pair you two up. I figure you guys were in the same unit together. And Shane is thinking that, uh, and maybe Shane and Keegan came up with this. They said, because I showed up late for rehearsals, I was working on another gig. They said, um, okay, so basically you guys are in the same unit. And Keegan's character had a friendly fire incident where he, the truck got turned around and he opened fire with a big grenade launcher or something on his own guys. And he killed everybody except for one guy. And that one guy is you, me. I thought, oh, that's fantastic, you know. So. These guys hate each other, but they had to spend three years together in the courts, in the military courts, signing affidavits, you know, uh, giving testimony, saying this happened on this date and this hour, and then where, where you know, what did what'd you do when you woke up that morning? Getting the whole story down for everybody and all the MPs and the courts and the paperwork and we sitting in some little MP courthouse, you know, for hours, you know, one bench and one another. And finally, one day, one of them goes, hey, you want to get a cup of coffee? And that sort of started this relationship that they have. I think what was cool, what Shane told me was, he goes, I don't want a bunch of guys, you know, who have been cast off and they're kind of bumbling. They're like that in real life. They're antisocial. They can't hold a conversation. You know, nettles can't talk to a woman. Um, we've all got serious problems. But when it comes time to um, engage with an enemy, all that goes away, and they're like a well-oiled machine. And I thought, yeah, that's great, you know. That's terrific. Because that training doesn't go away. It's ingrained into your muscle memory. It's ingrained into your soul. What would happen if these guys then were to be thrust into an extraordinary circumstances where you had this alien hunter come down from another planet and he's after his own objective and the two kind of intersect, you know, we've got McKenna who, who uh, has seen the alien and the government wants to cover that up, so what's the best way to cover that up is, well, you're crazy, you know, so they throw McKenna in with the with the loonies. Their costume is a work of genius, or several geniuses. I mean, it takes a lot of people to put together that costume. And they're all brilliant. And they all have to be brilliant for the whole thing to come together and work the way it does. You know, we've got gears, and we've got remote control guys working on this, and we've got all the sculptors and all the research guys making it look and feel real. Um, the latex guys, the, I mean, it's the, the painters, the, there's so much that goes in to this, to these costumes. Hey, Lisa here. Oh, no, sorry. Hey, Bale here. Bale. 
ghosts are common in the making of all movies. And according to the Movie Mistakes website, the movies with the most ghosts are Apocalypse Now with 390, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban has 296, another Harry Potter movie, The Chamber of Secrets, has 289, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace has 276, and 67. <laughs> Okay, so yes, let's get it right. Superman 4 The Quest for Peace has 267 and The Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring has 2000, 2000. and The Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring has 262. Yeah. Now, if you love goofs and bloopers, click on the link in the description. And remember, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. See ya.